Zimbabwe approaches its 37th independence anniversary next week, but the jubilation of 1980 has long diminished with the deteriorating state of the economy, which has seen many citizens wallow in poverty and thousands flee to foreign lands. President Robert Mugabe, at the helm since 1980, rejects accusations that he and his government failed the country, blaming it on sanctions imposed on him, his wife, and top officials by Britain, U.S., and other Western countries on allegations of human rights violations, vote rigging, and displacement of white farmers. We say that sanctions are wrong because they, they, they are not based on any valid grounds at all. President Mugabe enjoys a broad support on this point, including from long-time supporters like the Pan-Africanist Pressure Group, the December 12th Movement. Clay Omawale is the group's spokesman. These sanctions are illegal. These sanctions are targeted at people. Uh, they're not targeted at leaders, they're targeted at people, and they're targeted to foster regime change. Sanctions or not, Zimbabweans agree that the state of the economy needs a solution. Described as once the breadbasket of Africa, Zimbabwe has since become an economic ridicule, having reached unprecedented hyperinflation levels last decade, ditching its currency and adopting bond notes only usable in Zimbabwe. Protests over the deteriorating state of Zimbabwe have become a mainstay in the country, evidenced by the multitude of uprisings in the form of mass action or work boycotts intended to pressure the government to give citizens a better life. <laughs> Once unknown, Pastor Ivan Mawarire rose to a worldwide fame, calling on citizens to rise up and demand the change they want. Catastrophe has been our story for far too long. And now we need courageous men and women and children to help us rewrite our future. His message has resonated with many of the country's youths, including Anselia Mangena, a native of Blawayo, Zimbabwe's second largest city. My hopes and dreams for Zimbabwe are dreams and hopes that many of us millennials share. We just want only one thing. We want a country that gives us opportunities. And uh, frankly, I know this might be very, very controversial, but frankly, we are tired of Robert Mugabe. But even among millennials, there's divergence as proven by the pro-Mugabe rally of last year, dubbed Million Men March, which saw thousands of youths attacked to the streets in support of President Mugabe. Many are pegging their hope on the upcoming 2018 elections, which they see as a critical turning point for Zimbabwe. But under who and what will that change be? Although President Robert Mugabe has declared his candidacy to run and win the 2018 elections, his once ironclad ZANU-PF party has of late been symbolized by allegations of factionalism and even a vacuum of leadership as the 93-year-old president shows signs of frailty. Even once staunch supporters like the now fractured war veterans groups have since openly ditched their support for their former patron and appear to be looking elsewhere. We will not be bothered about political parties anymore. We only want we, we only want people who are competent. Echoing such a position is former loyalist and pioneer of rebel music called Chimurenga, Thomas Mafumo. That's not what everyone was expecting this is why you see people are revolting today 
Meanwhile, in the camp of opposition parties, many have chided the opposition for its infighting and lack of vision or alternative for improving the country. It is to get rid of ZANU-PF political governance culture which has pervaded this country for the last 40 years. As the elections for 2018 approach and jostling for position intensifies, Zimbabweans are asking how can they bring the change they want.